Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peeps, my peoples. So let's talk about Atlanta, season two, episode one. OMG, I love the episode. I love the music. I hope they bring Cat Williams back. It seems like it was like a redemption for Cat Williams to face up to everything that's been going on because we all know that um, Cat Williams solved um, or closed his uh, alleged assault case against this woman and so we'll see what happens and it's funny how um his real life is pertaining to you know Atlanta basically kidnapping and you know basically you know kind of like some domestic violence situation going on so anyways um it was a good episode the music was great so let's start off let's start off with these two boys or whatever they got dreadlocks they got dreads they're chilling one's watching one is you know what I mean playing video games the other ones that was at work and was just talking about like oh homeboy from work wants to quit his job because he thinks this mixtape that's dropped or whatever so but he's also talking about that he wants to buy some you know drugs and the dude that's playing you know this um the video game is just like yo i know you can get some for cheap and for less and basically they go up to a drive through and um they order number 17 and, and some and a meal and I guess when you say number 17, that gives you the drugs that you want to buy an eighth, an eight ball, or whatever. So anyways, they pulled up. The dude that's working the, you know, register and the microphone or whatever, he's just like, okay, boom. He put the drugs in the bag and he opened the window. He looked. He said, oh, shit, these dudes got masks on. And they had the gun pointing. The passenger had the gun pointing and everything. I was like, oh, shit, I thought they were just going to buy some drugs. Why they got to rob a mother sucker? That's one thing about the drug business. Somebody might snitch on you, drop a diamond on you or try to rob you and but it was a good layout where people go right to the drive through nobody's gonna really be suspecting that you're selling drugs unless somebody finds out and drop a dime on you <laughs> to the popos and so then dude jumps through the um the the drive through window basically pointing the gun at everybody he wasn't gonna shoot anybody and so he, he he knew exactly where the drugs was kept or whatever he got the drugs or whatever and he's about to turn around and the dude that he's trying to rob the one that works at the drive through has some automatic assault rifle and was just shooting that mother sucker but he missed every step of the way like damn I told you guys play Call of Duty. <laughs> I guess <laughs> they're not like Troy Avo here <laughs> playing Call of Duty but anyways so, um, he shoots, so the dudes just shoot, so they're going back and forth shooting at each other and shit like that, but they both missing, they both ain't hitting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so the dude was able to get out the restaurant, the one that was robbing, you know, the restaurant, you know, the drive through place or whatever, and so he jumps in the car and he's going, and then all of a sudden the dude from the, the employees is shooting up the car outside, I was like, damn, doing this shit in broad daylight, tell me they ain't bought it, bought it, this is beyond trapped, I go to dude right there, <laughs> it's beyond on trap so but they have a girl in the back seat a young girl in the back seat and she is hit with bullets and she just started screaming and crying and then the dude at the um at the restaurant is just standing there looking i'm like shit like damn so he like you know they left they threw her out the car basically they threw her out the car because they're not trying to go to no no hospital or anything like that so they left for there to get help and most likely she might drop a dime and then they're gonna get locked up and then the dude that's shooting the gun he's gonna get locked up too as well because there's camp there's supposed to be cameras at these rest fast food places and the girl's gonna say the dude was shooting up the car so he gotta dip and he gotta get rid of that gun it seems like all of them are gonna be going to jail because it's on videotape most likely and then there's witnesses I'm just like, damn, it ain't worth it. Like him robbing that dude instead of just paying the, the money for it or get it on the cuff, it ain't worth it. And damn showing whether he could have lost his life and that girl could have lost her life. So basically the moral of the story is just don't sell drugs. <laughs> And um, know who you're selling to, and you just can't sell drugs to everybody. But anyways, your customer that comes to you all the time can end up dropping a dime on you because they get bagged too as well. And to young ladies and young males, don't hop in a car with anybody because you don't know what they're about to do, and you could be a part of that crime because that young girl could be charged too as well as accessory before and after the fact. So anyways, moving on to that, 
we get to Earn. Earn is still sleeping in a goddamn storage facility. So basically, he didn't get back with his baby mama. So he's sleeping in a storage facility. His boy comes in and was like, yo, man, you got to get up out of here because they know you're sleeping here. And so then dude started going through his stuff and taking his shit. I was like, what is he doing? Earn is like, what are you doing? You can't take my stuff. There's supposed to be an auction or something like that. He was like, yeah, I watched Star Wars too. I was like, I used to watch that show. Oh, shit. Long time ago. In the early 2000s, <laughs> on the mid 2000s, I was like, oh shit. And he said, they coming today. <laughs> and so then Ern goes to Darius' house, basically where I was living at. And, he, and Ern is feeling some type of vibe, you know. He, he says, what's up to Al, whatever. I was like, what up, what, you know. Well, what's with it, homie? And so then that's when Darius was like, oh, come over here and try some of these sliders. And he's putting down the slider on a bare table, whatever, like it's like something, like a gourmet meal, and it's something hot. He was like, watch out, it's very cold. Ern didn't even bother eating the slider. So Ern acts, you know, he knows the chemistry is off with between Ern, I mean, between, you know, um, Darius and Al. So basically... Um, he's talking to, he asked, oh, what's going on with you and, and, and Darius? He was like, nothing. I don't want to talk about it. And so anyways, Ern asks Darius for a ride so they get a ride or whatever. So boom, because Ern has to go see his, pro, his probationary officer or whatever. And it's crazy. He goes to see his probationary officer and bullshit. So anyways, and so then, you know, um, Al's girl walked in. He was like, what's up, Regina? She was like, who is Regina? And you can see you can see Al in the back like this. What are you doing? He's like, come on, man. Why are you throwing me under the bus? Like, you can't tell the difference between my chicks. And she was in... And um, I think her name was Tiara, uh, <laughs> Ta, whatever, Tiara. She turns around, who the F is Laverne? <laughs> and he was like, oh, you just remind me of this girl Laverne that I go to school with, Blasey and Laverne. <laughs> and so then she gives Al her food and they lay on the couch. And so then that's when um, Darius and, um, and, and, and Ern... <laughs> Uh, leaving, you know, basically to go. And so then that's when Ern just stops and says, hey, man, I don't know what's going on between both of y'all, but I love y'all. I love both of y'all just the same. <laughs> and so um, uh, Tiara, what her name is, she was like, what's wrong with this fool? And she's laughing at him. But Al knows and, you know, um, Darius knows that Ern is serious. He really got love for both of them like that, especially one's his cousin. So anyways, <laughs> so... Moving on from that, they go to the PO office or whatever. But before they get to the PO office, they're riding in the core. And so you got Darius playing this heavy rock and roll metal music. just sounds like static and yelling and screaming or whatever. And so then Ern is trying to have a conversation with him like, yo, what's going on between you and Al? He was like, I don't want to talk about it. And so then somehow, some way, you know, Darius got to say something crazy. Darius is like, yo, you heard of Florida, man? <laughs> And he was like, you know, we know who Florida man is, right? Florida man, he just shoots unarmed black people. You know, Florida man, you know, um, goes to his ex, you know, um, his ex-girlfriend when she's getting ready to deliver and beats up her new boyfriend. Florida man um, eats was eating a man's face off. Florida man, you know, eats, you know, was eating, beating up, beating a... Um, Flamingo to death. So basically, Florida man is a crazy white dude that gets away with doing all types of crazy stuff. And also, Florida man steals a car and then goes up to Checkers because Checkers is a place where a lot of certain type of people like to eat. <laughs> and so, and so I guess Florida man gets away with murder. And Florida man is kind of protected by the law. He's kind of protected by the cops, the police, the congressmen, the state people because he's Florida man. And basically, Florida man prevents African Americans from going to vote. So I guess if you we if you turn that around, Florida man can also be someone that, you know, causes situations and detrimental things to happen in certain communities where people don't even feel like they want to vote or think their vote don't count or they're too stressed out and too bogged down with their problems of just internal fear and things happening and popping off that they don't even go and vote. That's what I'm assuming. But anyways, <laughs> so... <laughs> Ern was like, okay, turn the music back up. <laughs> Ern was like, all right, turn the music up. Ern was like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that shit whatsoever. Ern was like, I don't believe that at all. I don't know what you're talking about. And so then we get to, you know, Ern, he goes to his PO. And basically she was like, his PO officer was like, you have been charged with attempt, you know, with narcotics, um, attempt to sell, 
a possession and intent to sell. And Irma was like, I only had a joint. Like, that's some crazy shit. They can lock you up over some shit like that, a joint. And so basically he had to pay $50. Then he has to pay $25 for each, you know, drug course and drug class that he needs to take to correspond with his probation. So with his PO and his probation, so he can actually get off of um, probation, basically. I was like, damn. And he was like, she was like, all right, peace. And he was like, so if I pay all that right now, if I pay, you know, three seventy five right now, would I have, would I have to even go to this class? And she was like, yes, she would. So don't even try me peeing that cup and get out of here, boy. So anyways, you know, um, Darius and Earn, they somehow they at the gas station, and Darius is sitting on the goddamn car like he's sightseeing and shit. And so they are sightseeing because they see this one young man shot down. And then the police, you know, white sheet over the young man. He was like, yo, it's close to Christmas time. People want to start killing and robbing because they're going to take what they need to take because it's, it's robbing season. Just like when they say when summertime comes, it's killing season. So basically, the, you know, people going to eat. Yep, they got to eat. And so, but it was funny when, you know, Erm asked, you know, um, um, Darius, you know, how does these um, fire Cheetos taste? How do these hot Cheetos taste and, and and um Darius was like it tastes like it tastes hot so anyways they get ready to bounce then Al calls you know um Earn and asking, hey, go check on Uncle Willie. Uncle Willie is AKA Cat Williams. So, like, go check on Uncle Willie, see how he's doing. Because Laverne called me and told me that he kidnapped her and all this other stuff. And so we just go, and she called the cops. So make sure everything is safe and good or whatever. So then he goes, okay. So then he asks, you know, Darius, yo, can you drop me off? Then when I get to the location, um, Earn goes, um, he says to Darius, um, I'll be right back. I thought you said drop me off. I'm like, okay. That's how people be getting free rides. <laughs> and so then that's when Darius was like, I can feel the negative energy. Let me go. I can feel the negative vibes from here. Let me go in there with you. So anyways, they go inside. Cat Williams is like, who the hell is knocking at my door? And he opened the door looking just like Cat Williams. The screen door, the house, the way Cat Williams, his persona, the way he embodied this character really reminded me of the self. Like they was dead on point, even though it's in the self. <laughs> and so... Cat Williams was like, who's the hell knocking at my door? <laughs> and so, you know, Cat Williams opened the door and he was like, you guys need to take off your shoes or whatever. <laughs> and then you can hear um, Laverne, uh, 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 Yvonne, you can hear Yvonne, you can hear Yvonne talking about, is that the police? Cat Williams said, you better hope it's not the police B word. I was like, oh no. And <laughs> this part was so funny and so epic. It was just like so crazy. <laughs> and Kat said, and Kat was like, you better hope it ain't the police. And so that's when Ernest like, did you lock her in there? Is that her in there? Is that her in the house? <laughs> I was like, oh no. So it was just like, it was just so funny. And so then he was like, well, Al came, told me to come over here and check out, make sure everything's good because, you know. And he was like, oh, Al can't come over here and check on me himself. Well, he's too good. He thinks he's DMX now. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. And then, you know, Erwin's was like, nah, he's on house arrest, basically. So, yeah, um, I was down on house arrest. <laughs> and he was like, and so then, you know, um, um, what's his name? Ern was like, yo, you know, Yvonne called out and said that she's been kidnapped or whatever. And, you know, and so then that's when Cat Williams was like, I ain't kidnapped her. I ain't kidnapped nobody. <laughs> she was like, she stole $50 from me. She stole $50 from me. And she goes, no, I didn't steal $50 from you. And and he goes, then, then, where, then where did it go? It only been me and you here in this mother effer. So where did the $50 go? Did it walk up out of here by itself? I was like, oh, no. And so she, she was like, where did it go? Did it, did it get up? Did it get legs and walk out here by itself? That's what that that's an old school saying. Did it get legs and walk up out of here? Did it get legs? <laughs> I was like, oh no. So like the whole scene was very touching. The whole scene was very real. It was like, yo, you could see that being someone's uncle. You can see that you even possibly being your uncle and having two members in the family coming to check on you. You know what I mean? Like something old school where your family still comes through from you and check on you, even if you crazy and you got issues. And so anyways, <laughs> 
<laughs> he said, did it get up? Did it get legs? Did it did, did it walk up out of here by itself? And then so, you know, Ern is trying to say, hey, like, is everything? Or Then she goes, yo, did you drink? You must have drank that 50. And, and Kat and w Willie, well, Willie's like, I never drank $50 in my life. I ain't never drank $50 in my life. I was like, oh, no. So he's like, basically, I ain't never drank $50 in my life. I ain't never swallowed $50. I ain't never spent $50 on liquor, basically, or, or in some of them terms. Well, he just knows that she she took his money. So Ern was like, yo. You know, it's this is very serious, you know, because I said that you kidnapped her, you kidnapped um, Yvonne or whatever, and all this other stuff. So what's going on with the situation? And then Cat Williams like, I I must have kidnapped her in 1971 because she ain't been a kid in 45 years. I was like, that was epic. I was, <laughs> I thought he was gonna say I haven't kidnapped nobody, and I, I have. I haven't, I must have kidnapped her in 1974. I thought when he said that, he was going to end the punchline with, because she's been around here for seven, she's been around here for years. But he flipped that and was just like, yo, I haven't kept nobody in 1974 because she ain't been a kid in 45 years. I was like, oh shit. And so Ern is going towards one in the room and they was like, there's a, she was like, there's an alligator, you know, cats, like there's an alligator in there. And she was like, in, um, um, Yvonne was like, there's an alligator in there. He was like, for real? For real? And he was like, yeah, there's an alligator in there. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> so, it, it just seems like... <laughs> and so, you know, um, Ern is like, yo, there's a domestic going on. Where is she? Give me the keys. Let me let, me, let, me let her out. Like, where is she? So, he's trying to find her. And then so, you know, um, Kat was like, well, it's going to take me a minute to look for these keys. And then Ern is like, the keys are right there. So, he gets the keys or whatever. And he's looking back at his, un at his uncle, whatever. So, he gets the keys. He goes in there. And um, um, he lets her out and everything. And he's talking to her. He was like, yo, did you take his $50? She was like, no, nah, I take $50. I ain't call the cops either. You know, because Ern is like, yo, saying that somebody kidnapped you is very serious, especially when the police gets involved. She was like, no, that's the neighbor down the street that called the cops. Her right there, because she's always calling the cops, basically. <laughs> I was just like, yo, I mean, like, this whole this whole scene was just so funny. And then also, you know, Ern gave her 50 bucks or whatever. It was like, yo, you know, get make sure you get your change back if you just, you know, whatever. If you didn't steal the $50, blah, in the third. So I was like, damn, Ern got 100 bucks on him? Because he couldn't even pay for, you know, $50 for his parole. But he was like, nah, I'm going to just do that payment plan, basically. So that so that's what happened. And... <laughs> And she was like, I ain't steal no money. I ain't take no money from him. No, I just... <laughs> and so then um, Ern asked her, like, yo, was that alligator living here when I was living here? And she was like, yeah, it was. Yes, it was living here. I was like, damn. And so he didn't even know that, you know, there was an alligator living in the crib. That's some crazy shit. And so... You know, so she, so she was like, it ain't me that called the cops or whatever. So then the cops knock, knock at the door. And then Cat Williams said, I was like, oh, my God, why is the cops here? Like, I can't believe. So who's knocking at my door like the Popos? He was like, oh, it's the Popos. I don't know what she... And then the cops was like, well, uh, we need to find out what's going on. Ma'am, is there anything happening? Do we, we got called because there was a domestic call or whatever. And he was like, there's no domestic going on here. Me and her ain't married. We, she's just a bitch that's living here. I was like, no, he did not go there. <laughs> he was like, we ain't domestic at all. She's just a bitch that's living here. We ain't married. She's just a bitch that's living here. She's just... <laughs> it's like, yo. And so the cops was like, can you step out? And he was like, nah, I can't. He was like, they was like, can you step out? Because we need to talk to you. And, you know, um, Kat was like, no, I'm not stepping out. I know my rights. And she has to fill out a, the, she has to file a complaint. She has to fill out the complaint. And then you have to come in. You have to serve me and all this other stuff. And they was like, no, you need to come out here. Things don't change. And he was like, I'm not coming out here. But I'll still, if you want to come in here, I'll get my alligator on you. They was like, you ain't got no alligator. We'll shoot the alligator. And then all the neighbors come around. They was like, he does got the alligator. He's alligator, man. Then the cops was like, oh, shit. It was like, yeah, he's alligator, man. He got an alligator. What the hell is Cat Williams doing with a big-ass alligator like that in the house? Like, who lives with an alligator like that? <laughs> and so, basically, so Cat Williams was like, I'm not coming out. And all the neighbors are just standing out there like, yeah, that's alligator, man. The kids are out there, whatever. The whole neighborhood's involved. Everybody's involved trying to see what's going on. And so, um... <laughs> He was like, I'm going to shoot that alligator. I was like, well, do what you got to do, basically. And, 
And so then Cat Williams shut the door. And so then, you know, um, Darius is still in the house. And then he looks inside the room with the alligators. He was like, it's nothing but hundreds of chicken caucuses here. It looks like Azalea Bank Snapchat. I was like, no, they did not throw a shot at her like that. <laughs> because, you know, she was online talking about how she gets power and how she, you know, you know, get things that she wants, basically. And she was, like, mutilating a chicken and had blood and shit all over the wall that she posted on a little Snapchat video and people, you know, copied it and pasted it everywhere. So, anyways, I was like, no. And then that's when, um, what's his name? Um, Darius was like, yo, listen, it smells like gel in here. It smells like a whole lot of gel. The vibe is gel, so I'm, I'm exiting out. So he bounces. He leaves out the situation. I was like, oh, shit. So he leaves. And so then... You know, um, Yvonne, she gives, you know, the fit, the $100 to Kat. And the cat was like, see, bitch, I know you stole my money. She was like, no, I didn't steal your money. F you. And I hope the cops bust a cap in your ass. Or I hope the cops, you know, take you down or whatever. And she was like, bitch, you better hope they do. You better hope they do. And she walks out the house and she's talking about, he kidnapped me. I was like, yo, this is just crazy. And so you have, you know, Ern trying to you know, diffuse the situation, trying to talk to his uncle, like, yo, you got to chill out, man, you got to go outside, because these people can come in here, he's Dave County, I think he said Dave County, or he said, um, you know, Dave County's Florida, he said something else, whatever city that, he said, they can come in here, or whatever, and he was, and so then, you know, Cat Williams said something like, you know, um, First, Ern says, so we don't want no shoot or nothing here. And then, so that's when Kevin said, you think I'm Florida, man? And so that's when Ern looks back at um, Darius, like, damn, he was right. He was like, I ain't crazy. I ain't Florida, man. I don't want no shootout or whatever. So anyways, um, he was like, come. And so he was like, yo, um, you know, Willie sent me here to make sure everything's okay, to make sure everything's all right with you and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, so you're here because of Willie sent you because he's money bags because he got the bags and the family shouldn't do business together because look what happened to such and such and such and such. And he, and he was like, so you scared and blah, blah, blah. And so Erin was like, no, I ain't scared. I'm scared to be like you. I'm scared. She's so talented, so smart, so brilliant. But you let effed up shit keep happening to you and look at you just basically just wasting away. And so that was like, damn, and that was basically like some, what people say a lot about Cat Williams. Like, damn, you're so talented. You got all this stuff, these things going for you. And you let all these situations get in, get in your way and hinder you. And just keep, after shit just keeps happening and keep happening to you. And so basically that's what Ern is saying to Cat Williams. And Cat was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> basically, he was like, I'm not going to listen to you. You're a homeless man. You don't even got a mirror to look in. I was like, I'm too thrilled. I'm too thrilled. <laughs> But he said, you a homeless man and you don't even got a mirror to look through. I was like, I'm just too thrilled. I was like, come on, cat, bring it, bring it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> he said, you're a homeless man. You don't even got a mirror to look at yourself. I was just like, oh, no. And so, basically, <laughs> but this is before Yvonne left. Before Yvonne left, because Yvonne was, like I said, she said, I hope they get your ass. <laughs> when Cat Williams said that to him, I was so, I was just like, oh, my God. And so Cat Williams basically is calling Ern out, saying that he's so scared. Ern is kind of not scared, but, you know, he doesn't want to see nothing happen to his uncle. But, you know, Al is calling the show, and they do listen to what everything Al says, because it's crazy for Ern to put himself in that situation with cops being involved, kidnapping, and all this other stuff, and domestic violence, when he's actually on probation, and basically his parole officer told him earlier in the day that, hey, listen, and you don't have to get convicted of another crime, because Ern was like, oh, I, all I have to do is just be convicted uh, charged with another crime. She was like, no, all you have to do is get arrested and then you're violated. So it's like Ern is putting himself in that situation. Is he, is he doing it for his family because he loved them or is he doing it because of money bags because he got the money, he got the bags and he wants to be down with his cousin basically work his way, you know, and it's a good standing with his cousin taking care of business. So I'm just like, oh shit. But when he said, I'm a, I'm afraid to be like you, I was just like, shit. I was like, damn, but, you know, Darius was like, I'm out, peace. And Darius grabs his shoes and was like, I listen, these are just my shoes. I'm innocent. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> so he, so then, you know, they, so Kat ended up going to his room and going to his stuff and actually giving, you know, um, 
giving, you know, um, earn a gun, a gold gun too. It's a pretty gun. Give him a gold gun and whatever. And so this is when Ern was like, yo, I'm just still mad at you because of my mother about what happened to my mother. I'm still mad at you about that. So he was like, here's a gun. You're going to need this for the music game, the music business. He was like, nah. Ern was like, nah, I don't need it. He was like, yeah, you're going to need it for the music business or whatever. And plus the cops are here. And, you know, Blasi and the third, and <laughs> there's 12 out there or whatever. So, Ern, he takes the gun. Mind you, he's on probation. Mind you, he just got through seeing his probationary officer, uh, his probation officer. And then on top of that, he's going to have a gold gun in his car. There's, like, mad cops outside. So, he's going to take the gun. He's going to listen to his uncle. His uncle quickly convinced him to take the gun. I guess he thought he can just slip out the house just like, you know, um, Darius slip out the house, but that's a big chance him getting caught with a gun. He would be locked down for life. I want to see what happens to his baby's mother because she got caught, you know, getting high at work and she lost the job. What's going to happen with that situation? So anyways, Ern, so Ern leaves the house and he was like, yo, my uncle won't come out. And all of a sudden you see that big ass alligator come out. The alligator was huge. And then you see Uncle Willie running down the street out the back door, going in his red robe. I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no. So they finally get back to the crib. And so um, I was smoking a blunt. So he passed the blunt to, you know, um, to Darius. So it seems like they probably made up. And then, some, and then another guy is staying at the house. I don't know what his name is. And so then Ern pulls out the gun. I was like, and they all laughing at him because he pulled out this gold gun. I was like, where you get that from? What is that? Oh, I got it from Will. And they're just laughing at him like, you are so stupid. Why would you hold a gun? Meanwhile, you got 12 outside. You got the Popos outside. You got the Beast outside. And basically, he gives you his gun so he don't get caught with the gun that you can get caught with and go to jail with. You know what I mean? And you're on parole. And you're on probation. And Darius just took you to probation. Like, like they're just laughing at him like, you got to be crazy. Like, what is wrong with you earn like come on i was like and earn was like i was like oh earn was like can you get rid of this one i was like no you better get rid of that gun yourself fool they just sitting there laughing then a dude comes out and he was like they was like who's this who oh that's my boy they just got out of jail he's gonna be staying here and so then earn is like damn i i was asking you know to stay here you basically he did ask darius and darius was like you know you gotta ask Al. and so then you know it's earn feeling like his back is up against the wall, but he said he was good. So where's Ern going to go to sleep? Because he can't go back to the storage facility, or is he? Or is he going to go to his baby mother's house? Where is he going to go? Or is he going to go to his family's house because his mother and father went to Florida, so he can't, he can't sneak in the house. He don't got the keys to that crib to get in there to sleep. So that's how the Florida man story got told because um, Ern mother and father was going to Florida to visit their sick uncle or something like that and so then Ern you know they laughing at him and so he leaves he put his back up against the door but before he leaves you know Darius asked him is he good and he was like yeah I'm good because I guess he didn't feel like he want to overstay his welcome plus he just got laughed at plus he can't smoke weed because he's supposed to be doing his drug test shit and he's just, and it was a hell of a day. So where the hell is Earl going to go sleep? So anyways, peace them out. This was a great episode. I'm glad Atlanta is back on TV. I got to learn these characters' name because the last time I seen this was like, you know, last year. And I wasn't reviewing then. So I love Atlanta. And hopefully Atlanta is not going to be disappointing at all because, you know, um, Insecure was kind of disappointing because all they did was focus on sex. Peace them out. One love.